Welcome back to calculus. Uh, we are on to our last section here, partial fraction decomposition, using that to help the integration process. So let's jump right in with our first example, and I'll kind of come back and give a little reflection on this afterwards and talk through. Um, uh, we'll give a little reflection, but let's just jump right in. Our problem is going to be integrating 5x squared minus 12x minus 12 all over x cubed minus 4x. And now that we're in our last section of what I would consider the more advanced integration techniques, which include integration by parts, integrating trig powers, and integrating, integrating using trig substitution, and then, of course, this technique, uh, you're going to have to be deciding which technique to use. So let's just maybe make a quick commentary on that. This is clearly not integration by parts. There's no... Uh, functions, different function types multiplied together. Um, there are no trig expressions, so trig powers is out. There's no um, that telltale sign of trig substitution, like that u squared plus a squared or minus a squared or uh, with the square root, typically none of that. But the key thing for partial fraction decomposition is the denominator is factorable. So let's try that and see where that gets us. We factor out x, right? We can do that. And then we could also factor x squared minus 4, since that's the difference of two squares, to get us here. OK. So now let's do partial fraction decomposition technique that you learned in pre-calculus, college algebra or whatever, and um, then we'll have something much easier to integrate. It'll be broken into pieces, much simpler pieces, rather than this big, huge thing. Normally, I'd work to the side on this. On your paper, you probably have room to do that, but on this little screen, I do not, so I'm just going to draw kind of a dividing line here and work below it, and we'll return back to this in a moment. I'm still going to call it a side even though it's literally below. Uh, so what do I have here? Write this down again. OK, so I want to break that up. You might recall that into three pieces. One piece will have x as the denominator. One piece will have x plus 2. One piece will have x minus 2. Up top, since the denominators are linear, you're going to have a constant up top. And that's usually true. We'll talk about the exceptions coming up, um, and other types. So they're constants of some type. They're not all the same, so I need a different letter. What letter should I use? Let's just work our way through the alphabet. And for whatever reason, people typically use capital letters. And because of this, this makes this memorable. You might remember, oh, the thing with capital letters. Yeah, this is it. So the way you approach a problem like this is you want to uh, get rid of all the fractions. So. Uh, let's multiply by the common denominator, which is always the denominator of the left side. So everybody gets multiplied by this. And you're going to see all types of canceling occur. Uh, I don't make you write this step down, but it might help you minimize your errors. Okay. So we're left with 5x squared minus 12x minus 12 equals a times x plus 2 x minus 2. b is left, which is x and x minus 2, and c, which is x and x plus 2. Now, you might wonder, what if these were in different order? What if my x plus 2 was last? It would be fine. Um, you might get a different value than me for b or a different value for a or c, but in the end, the correct number should be over the correct expression. Okay, so like in the end, a is going to be 3, so you should have a 3 over x, whether it's your first, second, or third term. Okay, so now that we have this, you might recall what, what I like to do in these is I do this thing where I say, let's let x equal some number. And I call, I, I'm looking for what I call perfect numbers, and there actually happens to be just enough perfect numbers on one of these. And in type 1, which we're doing here, there always will be just enough. So I'm looking for a number that I can let x be, where two of the three letters, I'm talking about letters, I'm talking about A, B, and C, two of three will be destroyed. So if I let X be zero, check this out. Well, we, we love plugging in zero anyway. But when you plug it in um, to 
for the b and the c, that x there, when you plug in a 0, it's just the whole thing is going to be multiplied by x. This whole thing is going to be multiplied by x. So those are both 0. So we end up with simply negative 12 equals negative 4a. And just as I mentioned a moment ago, a is 3. Um, let's try it again. What's another perfect value for x? Something that would destroy two of three letters. Now you might be thinking, oh, I know a is three, I can plug that in. Sometimes you need to do that, but if you don't, it's kind of nice to not have to mess with that. What if you just let x be two? Not quite as nice as zero, but look what happens when x is two. That goes to zero, that whole thing's gone. That goes to zero, this whole thing is gone. Only the C survives. So this becomes 428 minus 24, negative 16, is that right? Yes. Just double checking my work here. Yeah, negative 16. And so we have uh, equaling 8C, so C is negative 2. And then next up, what's another, is there another perfect number? If there wasn't, which in some cases there won't be, in like case it's type 2, you can plug in your a and your c and pick any value you want for x, but negative 2 is going to work really nicely. Also, there's a bit of writing in this technique, but don't try to shortcut it. When x is negative 2, First one's gone, and now this is B's one chance to survive. And that one's gone. So is this 20, 32 equals 8C, so C is 4. Up, oh, did that wrong, sorry. My B became a C somehow. That should be 8B, so B is 4. Otherwise, C was two different values. That would be bad. So then you go back to the beginning. Uh, not to the beginning, but up, up to this point here. No, no, this point here. And say that, oh, this is hard doing this, that 5x squared minus 12x minus 12 over x cubed minus 4x, that original expression, that's just equal to... 3 over x plus 4 over x plus 2 plus negative 2 over x minus 2. And yes, you could have put the minus kind of in between. That'd be fine. So all of that tells me I can go back up to my integral here and replace that with what I just discovered. This is the same thing as the integral of 3 over x plus 4 over x plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and put the minus in there. Minus 2 over x minus 2. And this is much easier because these are all just nice little natural log integrals, right? 3 ln of x. You could just pull the 3 out. 4 goes out front, ln of x plus 2. The only reason this is working because the derivative of the denominator is 1. If that was a 2x plus 2 or a 3x plus 2, we'd have to account for that. And we do have to keep all the absolute values there, plus C, and we are done. So once we got the partial fraction decomposition done, this was fairly straightforward. Okay, uh, we're gonna keep, we're gonna press on and keep going here. Um, so let's do another example. And once I conclude this, don't let me forget to come back and make a comment about why these differ. So example B will be the integral of 4x squared over x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1 dx. So uh, not a great u uh, substitution candidate close, but not, not quite there. So we're going to try to factor the denominator. It appears to be factorable. If you factor an x squared out of it, you know what I'm going to do? Let's do this over here. You can factor an x squared out of the first two. You can factor a minus one out of the next two. And for, for, any, for grouping to work, these have to be the same, and they are. 
Then you factor out that x plus 1, and you're left with x squared minus 1. What do you know? I could factor that. Okay. So now I have the denominator. I guess I could just do that squared, right? Ah, that looks better. Um, so we can do this with partial fraction decomposition. Switch. So we have 4x squared over x plus 1 quantity squared and x minus 1. Okay. This is what I call type 2. Type 2 is a, has a repeated factor. x plus 1 is there twice. It's repeated. It's x plus 1 and x plus 1 and x minus 1. This is not, though, 3 unit. Here, here's the problem. This is what you might be tempted to do. Oh, you're like, I got this. This is close, but not quite right. Like, yes, we got this. If you did that, imagine you wanted to simplify it. You'd say, wait a second. I can com I'm going to erase a lot of this in a second. I can combine those. That's equal to a plus b over x minus 1. And then you can say, wait a second. a plus b, a constant plus a constant, isn't that just another constant? Let's just call that d. And now you have this crazy problem where one of your, oops, that should be a plus, shouldn't it? One of your x plus 1s is gone. If you were to combine those, your common denominator would not be that. So you have to do something different. I'm going to back up all through that. There we go. Okay. So what you have to do, and this is just something you'll have to remember, is you have to write one of these with a square. That way, if you've got a common denominator, of this and this and this, it would indeed be that. It would, right? Now you might wonder, well, do I really need that? As, at times a might be zero, but it may be non-zero. You should include it. Okay. Um, so let's actually go back and make a comment on this right away. So this is called type two, what I call type two because it has a repeated factor. I'm going to call it a repeated linear factor. You'll see why that is important later, because we'll have different types of repeated factors. If we go way back up to the first one, this is, I'll use another color, type 1, because it had um, unique Unique meaning not repeated linear factors. So no factors that were repeated, and they were all linear. We'll get to the quadratic in examples three and four. Okay, so to do this now, nothing really is any different. You're going to multiply everybody by the common denominator. Sorry, this is kind of skipping a little bit, so it looks a bit splotchy. And so we put these in, okay, the x minus 1's cancel, x plus 1 quantity squared's cancel, part of the x plus 1's cancel, and of course, all cancels. Okay, so what are we left with? 4x squared equals a times x plus 1, x minus 1, b times just x minus 1, and c times x plus 1 quantity squared. Any perfect numbers you got in mind? I always hoped zero would work. No, zero wouldn't work. One. Let's try one. One will destroy A and B. C will survive. So we'll be able to solve for C. You might see a problem in the future. Oh, no, I'm not going to solve for one. Solve as many as you can this way. Destroyed, destroyed. So we have four equals... 4c. So c is 1. Right? Okay, uh, let me make sure that's what I did on there. I kind of did this a little differently. Okay, yeah, I, I was checking my key. I, I of course, I mean, it's very likely you're going to arrange those in a different order, and I did, so mine looked a little different, but it looks good. Uh, the other perfect number, there's only one more, is negative 1. 
that will destroy A. Whoops. That will destroy A. B will not die, then that will not be destroyed. So we'll have 4 equals negative 2B. So B is negative 2. Okay, there are no more perfect numbers. So this is a characteristic of type 2. You're going to run out of perfect numbers. Usually you have one left. If you have more than one left, we have to do something else, and we'll talk about that um, in the next video. But uh, if you have just one left, what I do is I pick a good number. We're out of perfect numbers, but we can pick a good one, like 0 or 2. Uh, this is, 0 is a good go-to if you haven't used it yet. What if I let it be zero? What I'm going to have to do, because no letters will be destroyed, so in this case, we pick a good number, you have to actually plug in for the ones you already found. So B, I'll let B negative 2. And C, I will let B 1. And we have a lot going on on this one, but many things are going to cancel. Zero equals A times 1 times negative 1. This becomes plus 2, and this becomes plus 1. In other words, negative 3 equals negative A, or A equals 3. Whew. Okay, all that tells us that this term, uh, which we had as 4x squared, let's go back to the very beginning, over x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1, that is the same thing as 3 over something uh, minus, let's just do it this way, plus 2 over something and plus 1 over something. I want to make sure I get these the same as I did here. x plus 1, x plus 1 quantity squared, and x minus 1. Double checking mine here, and yes, that looks good um, okay so finally um, we can plug that in so we have the integral you go back up here the integral of that okay of 3 over x plus 1 minus 2 over x plus 1 quantity squared plus 1 over x minus 1 dx. You might think, oh yeah, this is easy. They're all just natural logs, but they're not. Which one's not a natural log? The middle one. Yeah, the middle one's not going to be a natural log. Um, so I'm going to take my time on the middle one, but this is going to be 3 ln of x plus 1. The third term is going to be just ln of x minus 1. But this one, let's write this way, minus 2 times the integral of x plus 1 to the negative 2 dx. Hmm. Um, what you can do, you could substitute if you like, and check me on that if you want, but it's just going to be this. Um, x plus 1 is now going to be to the negative 1 power, right? It goes up by 1, and you pay for it out front. Put a plus C on there, and check me to see if I'm wrong. So let's just, what I mean is, take the derivative of that right there. You get, a little side note, you get negative 1 times negative 1 times x plus 1 to the negative 2 times 1. That right there is important. That's our chain rule. Chain rule didn't do anything here, so I guess it wasn't that important. But if it was a 2x plus 1 in there, it would, and you'd need another 1 half. In this case, wasn't much going on, so I didn't feel like I had to do u substitution. If you feel overwhelmed with that, do u substitution. Um, but it looks like that ends up being just x plus 1 to the negative 2. So, looks good. Okay, I'm going to get rid of all that stuff. Okay, so I think we have it. We'll just clean that up a little bit. 3 natural log x plus 1 plus natural log of the absolute value of x minus 1, and this is going to be plus 2 over 